You wanna know every little trick and area there is around your drop spot. And you wanna know it better than anyone else who may land there. Finally, after a whole season of the W key meta, Epic Games have given us a major competitive revamp. Yes, with all the new additions to season three, including the charged shotgun, a new map, and many, many others, Epic have added a brand new competitive layout that is almost entirely different from the previous seasons. So in season two of chapter two, you know, we had the infamous W key meta, right? In that season, the only way for you to place and win money in the events was to just flat out push as much as you could and just rack up kills, really. Even in high point lobbies with pro players, we still saw a lack of very, very stacked lobbies that we would normally see in previous seasons and in pro scrims. So leading to lots of unconventional play styles and unexpected players rising to the top. All right guys, so fun fact for you. The strength of aim assist and the fact that aim is just such an important factor in being aggressive made it so that many controller players were dominant in season two of chapter two. And you know, we kind of see how the difference in the aim assist nerf and the meta change caused unknown army to completely change his input from a controller to keyboard and mouse. So today, we're gonna be showing you how all the latest tips and tricks to dominate the season three meta. I'm so excited. What's going on guys? Listen, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Listen, if you are part of Bunch of Crunch Army, you know, we are people who inspire others to be great, not only in this game, but also in life, man. We spread love, we spread positivity, and we are leaders of our generation. All right, Bunch of Crunch Army, it's about that time. I'm so hyped, here we go. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that. Bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. All right, first and foremost, the first thing that's the most noticeable about the layout of the new competitive format is that eliminations are no longer four points. Furthermore, all right, we see many, many placement points being thrown around here, and they're at placements as high as top 75. This could mean, man, that you could be rewarded the same amount of points as a whole kill just for surviving for a few minutes. And it doesn't even stop there. There's even more points and heftier rewards the longer you survive during a match. This new meta basically takes the focus away from eliminations and really just puts it right back on placements where it belongs. Now you may be thinking this, but what if someone just W keys and gets like a 20 bomb? Well, this is entirely possible, but this player will now be playing in lobbies with some of the best players in the world. So mindless, <laughs> you know, pushing and just letting their mechanics carry them, this is no longer an option. And let's even say this player does start off with great momentum and ends up at the top of the leaderboards after their game, you know, after their game 120 bomb. But what about the rest? They have nine more games to play and these are going to be against the most incredibly talented pro players, all right? Meaning that if this player doesn't have good rotations, decision making, and even game sense, they're not going anywhere with their W King skills. As you've probably noticed by now. All right, this is completely different from last season, man. Like players can no longer do well solely because of their ability to push in W King anymore. But instead, they must learn to reuse an old set of skills that were used predominantly in many previous seasons of Fortnite competitive. And these are placement focused skills. Some of you guys may remember, and some of you may have not even heard of it, which is cool, but a few seasons back during the Fortnite World Cup qualifiers, a player by the name of Bizzle went ahead and placed in the World Cup qualifiers without using a single weapon. Yep, I'm not playing, man. Not a single weapon. All he did was utilize incredibly smart rotations. You know, he used utilities and movement items and lots of intelligent positioning and decision making. And almost all of his points came from placements and even a few victory royale, you know, which he achieved through heal offs. This is pretty much a perfect example of the meta that's gonna be going on throughout the season. Now, in this season, improving has been harder than ever. And that's why, yo, we're here for you guys, man. At Pro Guys, play with pro service. You know, we're just here to help. Where you can check out our website, you know, you can get access to live classes with some of your favorite pros. You know, pro one-on-one -on -one coaching with some of the Fortnite's top talent and so much more. So check us out, my friends. Link is in the description below. Now, for map changes, it doesn't even stop there. Sure, the point formatting is just, you know, a major influencer in the meta, but there have been also some major map changes that have made a crazy impact in the meta. First up, all right, 
Fortnite Season 3 map features lots of flooded areas and zones for the water where players can swim and rotate through them, obviously. This puts a ton of emphasis on fast rotations rather than fighting now. After all, many players are less comfortable fighting on water where your builds break down easier than they are on land, right? Even though that you can't die of fall damage, water fights can actually be very, very dangerous because of the fact that they can attract lots and lots of third parties since build fights will usually result that. Not to mention the insane amount of materials and loot that you have to come up with just to participate in these type of fights. Epic also added in water spouts, peppers, the impulse launcher and crash pads which make rotations and getting to the zone much more predominant than just W King and going for kills. Not to mention, man, that the charged shotgun itself has its own impact on the competitive nature on the game. By now, all right, many of us love the charged shotgun or we're at least trying to learn how to use it now. But that's the thing, many players still haven't even mastered it fully and this causes a lack of confidence, which in turn makes it so that many players will prioritize placements over kills, making them just play more passive in general now. Before in the previous seasons, we almost always had the pump shotgun, right? Or at least a dominant shotgun that was somewhat instant and not delayed. This kept the gameplay fast paced and it really had a very consistent meta when it came to how fights were carried out. But the introduction of the charged shotgun and the new mechanics that came with it, specifically having to do with the delay that comes with the charging mechanic, many players have just began a process of relearning and adapting to the new fighting meta now. This in general, it really makes it so that players just play much less aggressive and just are really just more focused on actually getting placements rather than kills. You know, now that we've talked about the meta change and the influence that the different things have had on it, let's take a look at how you can work around this meta and become a legend in season three of competitive Fortnite. Who wants to become a legend? Come on. Okay, so off the bat, one of the most important aspects of the new season, we've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. It is your drop spot. Not only does this spot need to have the potential to have great loot, but it also must be somewhat you know, secluded and mostly really consistent. The early game is like one of the most underrated yet most important aspects of the game, mainly because many players will either drop in different spots every game or not have good drop spots to begin with. This causes inconsistencies and lots of RNG to dictate whether or not you're gonna perform well. So to put this in perspective for you guys, let's take a look at this hypothetical situation, all right? Let's say that your ideal loadout is to have a charge shotgun, an SMG, two healing items, and an AR. Okay, so if you go ahead and land somewhere hot or contested, you're going to either get pushed or have a fight somewhere within two minutes of you landing. Either that or you guys share the loot and the team, which uh, <laughs> is cheating, can get you banned. So basically, this is what we're saying. You will have to fight them and you're going to be fighting them with whatever you end up getting off drop. What you're basically doing is playing a game of chance here. You're hoping that you get a gun of your choice, but you could always be given a hunting rifle and bandages. Yeah, one of those games, man, you know that's a wrap. While your opponent is given a scar and possibly a blue charge right off spawn. Now, on the other hand, all right, let's just say that you landed somewhere by yourself and had the opportunities to loot it, and you got everything that you need without any threats or opponents nearby. Once you finish looting, you now have something close to your ideal loadout and you're absolutely ready to fight now. You have everything you need, you're comfortable, you're ready, you're confident. And so this is just a good explanation just to show you why dropping cold is so hot. So the first step is to pick out a good drop spot that is secluded and has good loot. Then drop in that area many, many times, game after game, until you've learned every, like, just nook and cranny, all right? You want to know every little trick and area there is around your drop spot, and you want to know it better than anyone else who may land there. So almost in a way where it's your arena, right? It's your home territory that you're fighting in. No one knows it better than you, giving you home court advantage. Once you've successfully survived the early game, well, there comes the mid game, which is mainly all about rotating into all the circles one after another, while also picking up some extra loot and just farming materials along the way. So this part is just pretty straightforward and really has a few tricks for consistency. So the first is to always try to rotate near the edge of the storm. We've said this before, but you gotta be reminded of this, okay? In areas where there will be little to no one around you. Take the extra time to rotate around the circle to areas with less dense populations and a closer area between the zone and the storm. 
these areas, they're going to minimize your chances of just running into opponents and really risking getting into unnecessary fights. Along your rotations, don't forget to farm up materials, man. Like materials from trees, stones, metal cars to build up to max mats, okay? You want to have a close to max materials as possible before you enter the end game. Speaking of the end game, this is the most important part of any when it comes to season three meta. The end game is the ultimate test of all your skills all in one. Not only are there tons of opponents all around you, but there are moving circles, storm surge, terrain, and even more obstacles all around you that you need to navigate through. So the end game is all about smart rotations and positioning that you put out of everyone's line of sight. You always want to be the player that no one is looking at, really, which is insanely hard when there's 40 players like cramped in a tiny area of the map. So there's a few things that you can keep in mind to just boost your chances of survival. All right. Let me tell you this. First, always pay attention to your layer. This is the level at which you're traveling at, whether you're on low ground, mid ground, high ground. You always want to pay attention to the congestion on your layer. If there is a lot of congestion and players, then, you know, are going to want to switch to a layer either up or down. Depending on how many players there are above and below you, you always want to be in the area with the least amount of players as possible, but more preferably the high ground. So if you could pull it off, you know, without being targeted or contested by others going for it, go for it. But if it's a great risk, uh, don't take it. You've gotten this far. There's only a few more minutes left until you get the big points. As a good rule of thumb is to really just be directly in the center of the zone until you get to moving zones. This will keep you as close as possible to the next zones. Now, once you get to moving zones, all you got to do is really just pay attention and stay at the edge of the circle all the way closest to the direction it's moving. OK, also utilize tarping with ramps to conserve materials and, you know, just have an easier time rotating. So, guys, keep doing this until you reach the final zones or a very small number of people and then hunt down the last few players to get that victory royale. With these advanced tricks, my friends, and this ultimate guide, new meta, there's no doubt that you're going to be dominating your opponents, man. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited because it's about to go down. All right, guys. Once again, it's your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. We hope you enjoyed, you know, this entire video. Comment down below what you guys thought and what you would like to see next on this channel because we strive to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor, man, by liking this video, subscribe to the channel and show ProGuides.com some love by using code ProGuides in the item shop. Hey, once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.